started. It's uh, 7.04. I would like to open up the Arlington Housing Authority uh, monthly meeting. It's a regular board meeting. It's Wednesday, March 16th. And again, it's 7.04. Um, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, roll call, Joanne. Here. Fiorella. Here. Gar. Here. Brian is here and Nick will be uh, 15 minutes or so late. Um, uh, so well, let's go right to the executive director's report, Jack. Uh, the ADA bathroom project at Winslow Towers in Chestnut Manor, as well as the HVAC project at Winslow Towers are near in completion. Uh, work has begun on the units affected by the fire at Chestnut Manor. Uh, the fire alarm system upgrade at the Hauser building is uh, currently still currently out to bid. An engineer from the DHCD has been out to Chestnut Manor to start the planning process for the electrical upgrade at Chestnut Manor. The Drake Cottage door replacement project, um, Monotomy Manor floor study, and house building roof replacement, a uh, flood study, um, house building roof replacement will be moving into the design phase uh, pending board approval of designer fee contracts tonight. Monotomy Manor is being considered by DHCD for a deep energy retrofit study through the Rocky Mountain Institute's Realize-MA program. This could lead to additional funding opportunities for the window replacement and building envelope upgrade, upgrades at Minardi Manor. Um, we're, we're very excited about being considered for this and uh, for the potential to, to really make this a, um, a really holistic modernization project from Minardi Manor. Mm. Our, our lien application has been approved. Um, lien is the statewide network of local community action agencies who provide energy efficiency and other energy, energy services and no cost income eligible clients. Um, this will allow us to, to address um, a number of different energy efficiency um, initiatives and, and push for you know things like insulation, weatherization of windows and things like that. So we're excited that it's finally been approved and we've been notified that a, um, a, cus a customer service rep will be reaching out to us soon to, to discuss the next steps. Um, Eversource is in the process of fixing, fixing light out, outages around Minotomy Manor. Um, they've already fixed a few and I'm um, staying on top of their service rep um, to, uh, to continue to fix the others. There were some delays related to snow and um, in cars, but we're gonna work with them to, uh, to fix some of the others. Uh, in regards to COVID-19, uh, the town of Arlington is continuing to, continue to provide free testing on Mondays at town hall. And the Arlington Housing Authority has secured additional COVID-19 testing kits for residents through MEMA uh, and is in the process of issuing them out to residents. In regards to tenant training events, um, last month we, we, we got the process started with some fire prevention and safety classes. Um, this past month, we did an emergency preparedness training class at Kusak Terrace. Our resident services coordinator is in the process of scheduling other sites for this training. The Arlington Police Department Animal Control Officer Diane Welsh held, held an event for children during February vacation. Uh, she brought an owl um, to show the children and also, you know, provide some other education on, on animals. Um, we are still waiting for the HCD's approval for our grievance procedures, and I'll continue to follow up with our housing manager to figure out when they're going to approve that so we can get that out to residents. Staff are, are working hard to complete the senior public housing annual rent redeterminations. Uh, the new rents will be effective May 1st, 2022. And you know, notices will be starting to go out to residents uh, very soon if they haven't already. The SHARE program will end April 15th, 2022. We have received over $60,000 in rental assistance for residents in need. Um, and we're still applying for residents that need it at this point, but the deadline is April 15th. We are in the process of, in the, we are in the preliminary screening process for the assistant executive director job. Once we have completed our preliminary screening, we will reach out to the LTOs so that they can participate in the process. The family self-sufficiency coordinated job is still posted and we're still seeking um, applications from, uh, from the public for that role. Um, in the interim, our, our contractor, Sandy Reiniger has continued to provide um, services for the program. And, um, and we're very grateful for her to continue doing that while uh, we're in this transitionary period. Additionally, we are in the procurement process for the cleaning and landscaping services at, um, at a number of our different sites. We're, we're excited about the potential to 
um, get some services like this in our in our residences, in our in our buildings, and and feel that this will you know provide our maintenance staff even more ability to um, to focus on some necessary areas that we're hoping to to address in, in the near future. That it, Jack. That's it. Um, anybody have any questions, for Jack? I know we screwed it over somewhat quickly, uh, this potential at the Mononymy Manor. Um, this has got huge um, potential for us if we're chosen for this. Uh, when he refers to the building envelope, I mean, the, the potential here is that, you know, those brick buildings and stuff could be wrapped, insulated, wrapped, uh, that would change things with the windows, of course. Um, yeah. You know, you could have a whole, a whole new look down there. Um, whether it be um, some type of a stucco or a siding or something like that, but you know that could develop into a um, um, instead of looking at brick buildings, you could have a um, you know a whole host of colors and stuff. It's pretty exciting. And when will we know if we've been chosen for that? So right now they're they're, they're pursuing the study and um, mm -hmm. and then you know pending the, the results of the study, um, then we'll be able to apply for some different other initiatives like the. The, um, the thousand apartment challenge and, and others, and you know, it's going to lead to additional funding opportunities. So, the, the results of the study will provide us information related to you know what one we can would be the best option for Monotomy Manor, and then it will also provide us some information related to you know what we can afford and afford it right now. Um, so, we're, we're excited about all the different potential here to, to really make. The development down there are energy efficient, especially given that the residents of Monotomy Manor pay uh, their own utilities. And is this, would this delay in any way this window, assuming we get the funding, just, just a section, would this delay in any way the, the window project? Um, obviously, assuming we get the funding and so forth. I, do, I don't believe so. Um, but, you know, I'll have a better idea as the study moves on. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I don't believe it's, uh, the plan is still to move forward. Um, in, and hopefully, we're, I'm going to be able to, and, and you know, myself, Chris, and others will be able to really push um, for additional funding sources. Um, on the on the docket tonight is the our high lab application, yep, and right. we'll be looking into some other things. And there's potential there to get funding three to one um, to the funding we've already gotten from the town. So um, whether the, the state can actually give that to us, but I think Monotomy will be a really great um, candidate for any funding the state wants to give us because of how much the town has already. Invested in right. yeah. yeah, that's great. You got to let Nick in. Nick, uh, well, I, Nick's here. Go ahead, Joanne. Oh, we just came. Uh, um, yes, it may be a, a really good opportunity, but the people um, I talked to at Monotony Manor don't feel excited, they feel confused. And I would hope this is a project we could do with the tenants who, after all, live there and are going to have to put up with a lot of construction. And uh, I'd like to suggest that Jack have a meeting with them and describe what he has planned for them. I think you're way too early on it, though. I mean, this is a study for the potential. So, I mean, this could be years off. But, but Jack, you, any comment on that? Yeah, I think that it would be really, you know, I think it would be a good time for me to really sit down with the resident of Minority Manor related to the potential um, for this would be, you know, once we start getting results from the study. Mm -hmm. um, and start to get an understanding of exactly because I don't want to talk about hypotheticals when those hypotheticals might not even be the reality. And did they give you an idea? Is it six months? Is it a year before the study's done? Right now, I'm just providing them data so that they can um, determine if we're going to be eligible for the um, for the additional funding sources that would allow us to do the study. So I'm still in that process. Um, the window study itself is is moving ahead and, and I'll be in touch with the advocates to see where we are with that portion. But as far as the additional portions of it, um, I hope to have more news soon. Yeah. And, and by at least next meeting. Yeah, go ahead, Joanne. Um, well, I'm more confused than ever. I mean, I think it's important mm -hmm. to talk to the tenants as you move along of things that you might be doing so we don't have rumors and anxiety and concerns. Um, also, I, I did talk to Jack briefly, but I'm, I'm very confused. I thought the idea was to get the state inspector to come and give 
evaluate how much it was going to cost to replace the windows. Now we may do it differently with something else, that's fine, but it's been since last, I believe July, that we were supposed to have him come and evaluate the windows. Now, is he going to do it or is this something that replaces his evaluating? I don't understand what this, who is doing this study. Is this the $20,000 that we uh, appropriated at the last meeting? That's correct. So the, and who is, so okay. the advocates, architects, and planners who's conducting the study. Oh, and they've so done things in an anonymous manner before. That's correct. Like the uh, we're, we're talking two major things here. We're talking the study that's going forward, the window replacement. So the architect studies it and determines what product and how much, and, and then it goes to the next phase. The envelope thing that he mentioned is a totally different thing. Jack found it, uh, applied for it, and it's a different study that if it concludes that, um, yes, we qualify for this project, then we would go further to the next for funding. So two totally separate things. My, yeah. and to be clear, they will be working with advocates on, on this. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, they will be, they'll be working well, together. Where are we on the window study then? Well, we just well, has not come from the state to evaluate to see how much it would cost. Is that right? The, the window study is not complete. Um, I have not received results yet. Well, oh, we just voted on that last month. So, I mean, it's going to take advocates a little bit of time here. Uh, is, but my concern is with when, when you Abacus is doing the window study, and then who is doing the envelope study? So that's that's to be determined. Um, that we're still working on getting that funding source. Okay. Um, so that's that's still to be determined. So Abacus is doing the study instead of the person from the state who's supposed to come down and evaluate how much it's going to cost. Yep. So this, this, the state evaluation in the, end, in the capital planning system, I believe, is about $4.6 million for both sites. So um, the guy has come down and taken out the windows and found out how much it made an estimate about how much it would cost. That's, that was not what, so the state is not doing that type of work. Um, that's part of the study. It's wait, wait a second. I, we've been waiting all this time for the state guy to come and evaluate the windows. So he's no longer, that, that was required that he do that. But, and we left two apartments vacant for him to do it. But now he's not going to come. I, I think there's just confusion, Joanne, about the study versus, you know, the, um, the engineers and the engineers from the state. Um, Abacus is doing the work that you're referring to. And Wait, what study, work? So they're doing the study? That's correct. Doing the study. But they're not evaluating them for cost. It, I, I think that's all going to be inclusive. But I mean, it, it, it's going to be it, they're going to break. They, it's going to be you know the cost estimates. It's going to be you know recommendations for work to be done. Um, so, so it wasn't required to have the man from the state come down and evaluate the windows, which we've been waiting for for a number of months. It's not required. It, you can go it, on and get another is. person to do it. Uh, I remain it, very confused. It is required. So I hate to belabor it, but Jack, did you take us again through the steps here so uh, we can understand? Um, so I, I think maybe part of the major confusion with this is in a normal project, if we actually were moving forward with say a window project, window replacement project, building envelope project at this time, monotony manner, um, the state would have a component before the designer selection and then moving right. into the bidding process. But because this is a study and not a, um, not the actual project itself moving forward, it's that study, you know, before we knew about ARPA, before we knew about anything, um, any of the potential possibilities is that this is different in that sense that the study is gonna provide us you know, a lot of really great information on, on, on what's going to help us really plan well uh, for a building envelope and window project at Menogamy Manor. In other words, the study will open us up to a bigger project than just the windows. That, I'm hopeful that it will provide us data that we'll be able to use to apply and, and seek out additional funding, and, mm -hmm. but also educate us on what's necessary and, um, and maybe ways in which we can 
I prioritize if necessary, if funding is, um, becomes difficult. I'm sorry, it makes no sense to me. I don't, Fiorella, do you understand this? <laughs> Since you live well, there. Let, let me just add one thing. The, the architect that does the study will then determine the data to give to for bidding. So, you know, you need to have this report from the architect before we can go to bid. So, so then Abacus is then giving the estimate of how much it will cost. They'll do that in this study. They typically estimate. Now, when you go out to bid, it could be, to, especially with what's going on today, the bid could be twice as, as, as the estimate. So, uh, you know, we're working on a project in Mass Maritime where there's a 40% um, overrun, which is, is crazy. So, but we can't until you have this, the, the, the project by the architect to then coordinate with the state um, the the interesting part here is that we're looking for our own funding. So as Jack referred to, if this was a simple state project, they would do everything soup the nuts. But because we're trying to get our own funding for it, it does confuse it a little bit. Um, and it, the reason we're getting we're in the right direction. I, I think the bottom line is everybody, we're moving in the right direction. We voted last month to hire the architect. He, when he or she is moving in the right direction, and you know, hopefully, we'll have an answer in a month. You know. Um, and, and have some direction. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that the architect, which I should have looked at more carefully, is to plan a larger project, which might be fine, but it's not the window project per se. So we're setting aside the window project and we're not having the guy come from the state to evaluate no. it. No, no. no. Those no. no. Joanne. That's so not correct. We're having advocates come and have the study done then it's going to go out to bid. What they're talking about with the walls, Abacus is also going to look at it to evaluate that. But we don't, we, he, Jack is still in the process of putting that through. Correct. So even if Abacus says, okay, you need the brick and all of that, the window is still going to move along because right. we still have to hear back for Jack. Still has even, to hear even though the state is not going to send the architect uh, back to give it. There's, well, so this, large project, there's this larger project that's being considered, which might be just fine, but I think we ought to be clear about that. So which is to wrap the buildings and different kinds of things to protect drafts and so forth. So Abacus is gonna come and do the study and then the state is also gonna come and do what? So, so if I, I think what might help clarify this too is to, to rewind back to about you know, almost this time last year. So we were, we were, we, in June, July time frame, we did the hearing for the capital plan, at which point we talked about the window study as a means in which we could understand what the full scope and cost of a window and building envelope project would be in an automated manner. At that time, we did not have sufficient funding to add it to our capital plan, given that it would take up almost five years of our capital funding on its own. So the, the, process, the, the reason we selected the window study was so that we could still get that information so then we could go out and, and, and seek out funding. Um, and, and then, so what ended up happening in August timeframe, um, you, we had conversations with Adam Chapelin, we had conversations with the town of Arlington, and we began to be considered for ARPA funding. Um, you know, fast forward to now, it looks like we're potentially gonna get two and a half million dollars from the town of Arlington for ARPA funding. We're also potentially gonna get uh, $1.1 million from the town in CPA funding uh, pending you know, some other factors through CPA as well. For the windows. So, for the windows. Okay. So, so, and that puts us in a position now where we're getting to a point where we're going to be able to add this into our capital plan. And once we add it into the capital plan, that's when the normal functions could happen as per, to a, another project. Like tonight, we're going to be getting some design fees approved, and then they'll be able to do the design and then put the project out to bid. Unfortunately, because it's a little bit more complicated because of the cost of this project, it's going to take more time because we're going to have to add this project still into our capital plan. Mm -hmm. We're going to still have to, you know, but with, with the study that should help move the process along at that point. Yeah. And, so and the, then, the, excuse me, I just want to make sure I have it. The design you're talking about is wrapping the, these, whatever they decide to do. Yeah. Over the I, I don't think that there's anything particular necessary, not necessarily in mind at this point. That's, you know, the, be the benefit of the study is that they're going to look at it and, and provide some recommendations. So there's no, it's not a straightforward window 
replacement right now. No, 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 no. That that is a totally separate thing. Windows is A, the wrap is B. B may never happen. B, Jack found an avenue for potential funding. So mm-hmm. it's a to- it may never happen. Um, it's a totally separate thing. Um, we'll see windows before we see wraps, if we see wraps. Um, but in, you know, just to put a finite point in this, even when we get to the window phase, you know, there will be a meeting, especially for Fiorella and, and the folks at Monotomy Manor, there'll be a meeting with down there to say, look, at this is what the architect uh, proposes. Here's the color, here's the type, here's the style, and, and what we all think. You know what I mean? So same thing. If we ever get to a wrap issue, we would have a meeting, probably have many meetings to figure out you know, the, the, the specificity of all the, the wrappings and stuff like that. So, um, so the, the window project doesn't need this guy from the state anymore. Our well, no, I mean, not in regards to the study. And, and, um, and, and I, yeah, so, so we're not waiting on anybody from the state at this point. The study. Does he still have us on the list to come and see the windows and give? No, because he's pushed the he's pushed the project along to Abacus. Okay, I have a concern about that. Abacus did our kitchens. Abacus um, was the architect, I believe, for the kitchens. They weren't the contract. Okay. Did they have to check the job after they were done with it? I would believe yes. There would, would be a punch list that multiple so times would participate. My mm-hmm. concern is that I thought we, you know, I thought if someone did a bad job, then we wouldn't use that company again. And that's what Abacus did for the kitchens—a bad job. The tiles left completely up. Some people, okay. in order to open the door, have to close, you know, open their their oven. So, is there another company that can do the study? No. Or that that's that work was done by a contract and not the architect. Abacus no, is, if Abacus came to check it, then they clearly didn't do their job either. But if well, the should have been, but I, been I, a I mean, So the unfortunate part about the public bidding is that it's it goes with the lowest bidder. Um, there's other factors involved as well, but if the, if the contractor does the does the project to to the standard and is able to showcase that it used. You know whatever whatever the, the project the products were and to the standard that was agreed upon and and they met all the uh, requirements in the punch list then then we move forward if if we find that the contractor did the did the, did the job inadequately then they that's reflected in their decam review so who was the contractor that did the kitchen i would have to look into that i don't know that mm-hmm. offhand but remember one thing we vote here for the final approval and payment so Anything going forward, and I don't remember the kitchen project, but anything going forward, I mean, Chris uh, Partridge and the staff would inspect it to make sure it's functional work. So, for instance, after all the windows are in, if they're not going up or down, um, then Chris is going to tell us, and we're not going to vote to pay the company. We're going to hold back the funds until everything is fixed to our satisfaction. Why didn't that happen last time, though? I mean, the tiles literally lift the tiles up. It was not properly put down. They did not. They did not follow the the instructions of the whatever glue they were using to put the tiles. So if Abacus is the architect and they had to come after to check and see, oh, you did a great job, then they didn't do their job either. And if well, me came in to check the job, then they didn't do their job either because the kitchen is not. It's it's not good. Well, so, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure the day after the project was done, the tiles were probably glued to the floor and worked. I mean, it, it, this sounds like it happened over time. It's, for whatever Every the reason. tile happened over time. I am highly aware of the fact well, that they did not follow the instructions. I have information saying so, that they didn't put it correctly from the beginning. Hmm. While I can't comment on you know, work that was done um, you know, a decade ago, uh, what I can do is, is indicate that there are multiple checks and balances in these processes. So while the architect is, you know, one of the key players in checking on, on how work is done, um, the state and multiple other individuals participate in that to ensure um, projects are completed. Let's say the state comes by and sees the kitchen, for example, and they're like, yeah, no, this was not adequately done. 
then would they have to be the ones that take abacus out so they don't have to do the study? Like, that's my concern. No, they take the contract. You do the job correctly in the first place, whether it was inspecting it after or planning for it or, or not telling the contractors how to do it correctly. That's my concern. The fact that we had someone come in here and inspect it and say that that was okay. It, it's not okay. And if maintenance came here to check it too, then, <laughs> then that wasn't okay either. Of course, Nick, do you recall the date that these kitchens were done? How many years ago? It's, it's probably a good 10, 15 years, if I remember it. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're far beyond any, any lit litigation type period. I mean, but, to, but to your point there, uh, Brian is, and Fiorella is, uh, again, we have the right to choose the vendor, inspect the vendor, mm. and sort of hold the vendor in, in responsible for implementing the project the right way. Now, you can look back 15, 10, 15 years and say it was completely done wrong. That's okay. But, and it's not okay if they didn't do it right. But again, this board right here has a responsibility to find the right vendor, to find the right project manager, to find the right construction person, to implement and execute the right way and hold them accountable. It's exactly what we need to do, Fiorella. And you'll be on the board. And I, the and I hope, time. hopefully well, you'll be on the board. No, I, I, I oh. hear you. Hopefully you'll be on the board to help us do that in the future. But I don't know what you, what's your concern, Fiorella? I, I don't understand it. They I didn't do it right. Someone's gonna come in here to do a study. Someone right. that came in here after checking the job of the kitchen and saying that it's okay. If those are the people that are gonna come and check the windows, then I'm sure they're gonna say it's okay too. Well, we, have right, say, we have the right, we have the right. If, if, if they didn't do the, a job correctly, why cannot we hire someone else to do it? Well, you're right, Fiorella, we have the right to say no to these guys. Okay. You no, know, we should put it out to bid. Right, all three of these things put out the bid. Mm -hmm. We have to put it out to bid, and we decide who the right people are. And you're the study you have goes a, out to bid. I'm sorry. The study goes out to bid. No, I'm not. Not well, necessarily. Who we'll decided but, that Abacus is going to do the inspection? The, the state. Our um, our project managers from the state. Yeah. So I would have to call the state and explain this whole situation for them to maybe change to another company. Yeah. So let me ask you, Fiorella, have you lived in this unit since the kitchen when the kitchen was changed? Have no, you been 2014. Yeah. But since 2014, uh, the tiles have been lifting too. So uh, somebody just typed up that the kitchens are done in 2009. Nine. Nine. So, yeah. Yeah. so I, I guess, you know, read a lot. If you lived there in 2009 and moved in when the kitchen was just done, um, you know, I think it's a different different situation i think that there's no problem trying to find someone that lives here lived here in 2009 to let us know yeah exactly if there was a concern yeah. we should just make sure that we hire the right people here i'm with you right right. 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 right so all right so let's wrap this one up so we can move on um any other questions for jack <clears throat> So I didn't have questions, but I did have a couple of things that I, I sent out uh, about six that I did want to add to the agenda, but I don't mind like doing that till the end so we can just kind of get all the other stuff through. But did you send me something at six o'clock? No, to Jack. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I know it was like an hour before the meeting, but I just said I wanted to add three things if that's okay. Yeah, see that? Was it the questions you and I talked about this morning? It was more, actually. Two more things. Okay. So unless it's pertinent to any of these things that are on the agenda, we can't add to the agenda because of the open meeting law. So is it is it pertinent to any one of these items that we already have here? Um, yeah, I guess it could do with the budget. Okay, what number would you put it towards? You're asking me? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, you said to do it right after the, the executive director's report. Yeah. Uh, so what you what you and I spoke about was some of the handouts that we got, right? Yeah. The, 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 the handouts. Yeah. That's ask that question. I said that was that was fine. But if there's something different that you want to add to the agenda, we can't add it to the agenda. We have to give 48 hours notice. So we just got an update like 24 hours ago. 
Well, ask your first question. Yeah, Let's see. We got we got an update at ten o'clock today this morning. Yeah, but that question. was a handout. That was a handout. That wasn't an update on the on the agenda itself. Okay. So what's your question? Go ahead. Let's see if we can start. I have more than a question. I have a lot to say, and it's got to do with the budget. And you know, I just noticed a lot of things that I wanted to to ask about. I mean, I can go, but that's why I was saying I might as well just do it at the end so we can just get through it and. Uh, I can just say that at the end. Um, all right, let's do that. Let's get through the agenda and then we'll go back to Fiorella and see. Um, okay, moving on. Um, number four. There's a, um, we didn't do this last year. I think we didn't have time, COVID, whatever. I don't know what it was. But um, Jack has, has asked if we can go on. Um, uh, Juneteenth as a paid holiday. The state adopted it last year. The housing authorities, 99% of them, not 100% of them, have adopted it. We didn't get it done in time. So um, the motion is to add Juneteenth as a paid holiday under the Arlington Housing Authority uh, handbook. Any any uh, discussion on that? No, I'm move. Don't move. Don't move. Yeah. Don't move. So moved. Have a second. I second that. So we have moved by Nick, second by Fiorella. Um, all in favor? Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Brian's yes. So that motion passes. Number five, approval of the housing choice voucher payment standards in your packet. Any questions on that? Um. And just to provide a little bit of additional detail, so normally this would be something that would come out in the late fall, November time frame, October, November. Um, but if, if you remember back at that point, I indicated that the Boston Housing Authority and the Section 8 Administrators Association had filed a suit um, or an appeal with, um, with HUD uh, related to the FMRs that were put out at that point for 2022. Um, HUD reevaluated and came out with, um, with new FMRs. Uh, which which showed increases, which were um, which would be beneficial to the participants, which we're which we're very happy about and pleased. So what we're looking to is to approve at 100% of that fair market uh, rate that that HUD has proposed for this area, for the Boston area, um, and it would be effective from May 1st, 2022. I have a question. Gorilla. Why was John Griffin seen in that document? Yeah, I, I said, why was John Griffin's name on that document? Because I assume, I was going to ask that. I'm like, well, what was the last time we were we tried to update that? But um, if it was in 2022, why was John Griffin's name on it still? Yes, the, I don't. I don't see. His name. I'm trying to. Okay. Yeah, in the letter, in the letter that they sent us, Jack, it says it's a, it's addressed to John and not you. Obviously, they didn't get the memo. Oh, oh, for the um, for the next letter. Yeah. Yep. Oh, for the, um, You'll see it in the, the you're, you're referring to the wage rates for the for the maintenance staff. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So they they just haven't gotten the memo yet. Yeah. I'll we'll have to follow up with them just to ensure they understand who's. Yep. So do we have a motion for number five? Actually, I have a couple of questions too. Um, so is every person that's listed here actually hired, or are there some people that we just don't have? Okay, that's number six, right? That's number six. Yeah. Let's get number five out of the way first. No, so no, 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 I'm talking about number five. I see electrician, no. paper, labor. No, no, no. Number five is approval of the housing choice voucher payment standards. Jack is asking for a motion to go to 100% of the fair market value. Uh -oh. Okay. Yeah. So do we have a motion for that? No more. Sorry, I was on mute. Second. So we have a move by Nick, second by Gar. All in favor, Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. And Fiorella? Yes. Great. Okay, that passes. Now, number six. <clears throat> These are the wages that the state tells us we have to pay. Now, we don't necessarily have a body in each one of these categories, but this is the pick list that Jack put on the, uh, on the document here. Uh, there are many more people on the state list. Um, so we really 
don't have a choice. We see this every spring. Um, and these are the new rates and they usually go up, <clears throat> I don't know, a couple of dollars or two or three percent or something like that. So go ahead and your question on that then for you, Ella. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so so all those are filled up or no? Sorry, I just. No, my, my understanding is they give us a the, the housing, the, uh, the maintenance titles for the housing authorities in general. Mm -hmm. And, you know, while, you know, a, a lot of these are not um, titles at the Arlington Housing Authority, uh, mm -hmm. the benefit of them giving us an approval at these rates is that if in the future we did want to hire somebody in one of these positions, we would be able to without um, having to go back to the Department of Labor and Standards and redo the rates. Because what ends up happening is if I had to add a position at a later day, like mm -hmm. say I want, like a, a plumber's not on here, I need to add a plumber, then all the rates would get reset to that date. So it's um, it, the more the more titles on here, the better, um, just so that we have more flexibility of positions become available. Right. So is our electrician hired full time? That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many electrical? You know what I like. The can't maintenance do most of the elect. Usually, when I call about electrical stuff, usually maintenance is just able to do that quickly. So. How many jobs does he get a day if he's full time? The electrician performs his duties as an electrician by performing the necessary amount of electrical duties in a given day. Um, There's not to do it. Varies every day. Yeah, it varies every day. It, it varies, but he, um, but he, he's a full time electrician. There is a full time amount of work at the Alton House Authority for him, and. Um, and, and, and the work that the electrician done is the work that an electrician is required to do by code. If there are smaller jobs that the code doesn't require, I mean, it's, um, it doesn't require someone to have a, a license, then you know we could consider using a mechanic, mm -hmm. um, but an electrician is required to do the electrical work by code. Gotcha. So do, we don't necessarily need a motion to accept this, John Greg, or do we? Is this um, yeah, you should have a motion. Yeah, you should you should have a motion to accept the uh, rates from DLWD. Okay, so do we have a motion for number six? A motion for the acceptance of wages. I second it. That, so we move by fear, second by Joanne. All in favor, Ga? Yes. Joanne. Yes. And Nick. Yes. And Fiorella. Yes. Great. Move down to number seven. Uh, approval of the capital improvement plan budget revisions. Um, Jack, you want to talk about this? Yes. Yeah, so there was a there was an incident a couple of weeks back at the Hauser Building um, that was uh, that was concerning related to the electric panel. So we're uh, we're moving fast to try to address that. Um, that that panel in question has been replaced. However, just um, just for precautionary measures, we want to try to get a project in the works as soon as possible. Um, so by doing a revision, that will allow us to move forward. And later on the button in this um, agenda, you'll see that we did request emergency funding through CPA, which will help us move forward with this project. Great. We have a motion to accept, approve it. So moved. Second. I'll second it. So we move. Moved by Nick, second by Joanne. Uh, all in favor for the approval of number seven. Um, Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Nick? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Brian is a yes. Number eight, um, approval of the Ab Abacus Architect and Planners Design Services contract, the amount of 57,520, the Drake Village Cottages, the uh, doorway improvements. <clears throat> I have a question. Yep. Uh, so Jack can explain this to me. Um, the Abacus Architects are getting $37,520 to replace the entry doors, uh, design them. But the people who put them in are getting 10,000 somewhat. That, I'm not quite sure what these designer services do. And maybe if you could just give us a, a description. I don't know why that should cost more than three times than it costs to put them in. Where did you see 10,000, Jeff? Um, it's in, the, it's in the, the addendum. It's gonna cost a lot more than 10,000, but Jack, go ahead, Jack. 
the estimated construction cost for this project is $266,000. Yeah, and exactly. the designer fee is uh, $37,520. Okay. Um, so I think the, the $10,000 that you're referring to in construction is, is just a component of their design designer fee. Oh, it's not. Uh, it's broken down. It's not actual construction. It's there. Okay. It's just yeah. broken down and <clears throat> that's a part of their fee. So what does the designer do for $37,520? They measure them, they uh, look into different products. I, I don't understand quite what they do. So, so what we're looking at at the, the cottages at Great Village is where um, we're looking at, because they're the entryway doors, there are some things that we need to consider related to um, the code and regulation. Uh, we're, we're looking to put electric strikers in and potentially um, intercom systems in um, so that those doors will remain locked um, to provide some extra security to the residents so that some of those features will be um, included in, in that fee. Oh, so it's for purchasing some of these features, the 30. It's, it's for designing those features. Designing the locks. And then they provide project oversight as well. In, in many ways, you know, they go throughout the, the like another project. So they design the locks, you know, where they go on the door and on the frame, I guess. And then they supervise the people putting them in. There's different meetings throughout the process to see where, where they're yeah. at. And then the housing authority is able to work through the, the designer uh, with questions and, and we're able to work together related to different types of issues that come up if a change order is necessary, um, if there's any types of things that need to be resolved. It just seems like a lot of money to me. Is this put out to bid or is this someone you just hire who's interested in doing it? It's not a, that? Yes, the state doesn't require being put out to bid at that cost, right? It, it's, it's typically it's a set percentage or you know within it's, a, it's around a set percentage. Uh, for the designer fee, I, I'd have to look into that to get you some more concrete answers to that, but that's my understanding. And um, the, the designers with the Department of Housing and Community Development, they're, they're pre-selected, so we don't go through, through the designer selection process. The Department of Housing and Community Development does it for us. And those pre-approved architects are called what they call house doctors. Mm -hmm. And so they, they look into different house doctors with different types of specialties, like we'll get a different house doctor for a roof replacement project versus one that's going to be related to building envelope versus one that's going to be related to something completely different. It seems, frankly, a lot of money to design where to put the locks on the doors. So let, let me just say something here. Yeah. We don't have the authority to pick these things. Any project over a certain dollar value, state DCHD does this. They're the ones that pick this and they're approved by DHCD. So we can't just go out and pick our own designer. Um, because obviously we're dealing with state funds here. So, you know, we're not, we're not able to nickel and dime this guy or whoever they are. Um, it's not nickels and dimes. No. Well, yeah, but Joanne, you're not an architect and I'm not an architect. So we have to take what the state, you know, the experience of the state and we've got to let DCHD run these projects. The state doesn't and say we have to pay $37,520 to um, design where the locks go. I mean, I, I think it would be good to get a breakdown each well, time. I think, right, I think how much cost and how many units are there that we're doing that. I understand, folks. That's getting into the weeds of, of what Jack does, and that's Jack and Chris's responsibility to do that. You know, if if you are interested and want to do these things, then then Jack, you tell them when the meetings are and invite them down to sit with the contractors. But this is what we. This is the responsibility we give Jack and Chris to work I mean, with you. Is this the point of the meeting to discuss this stuff? What's that? Isn't this the point of a meeting to discuss these things? Well, no, it's I not. Just, no. So this comes down the point from of a meeting is not to discuss things that are happening in housing. Mirella, DHCD runs these projects. You've got to understand we don't run these projects. Mm -hmm. DHCD provides the funding. They run the projects, they pick the architects, they go out to bid, right? We approve the bids as part of the process, but we don't tell them where to put a lock or where to do this. And we don't tell them, you know, where to put a fire door or not to put a fire door. That's that's not our responsibility. So- uh, I would feel hard, 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 hard
holding Maybe classes I can... so I can discuss with people around here that were here in 2009, how the kitchens were, how they put it in. Um, because this is the same exact company and I don't want Drake to be dealing with this stuff too. So maybe hold on to it, talk to DHCD. I mean, I'll call and talk to DHCD and see what they have to say about this because I wouldn't feel comfortable voting on this. Joanne has a concern about how much it is. Maybe she can ask more questions about it and we'll see how the DHCD feels about the information that will be given to them about this company. Uh, it they should at least have an itemized bill. Maybe I, may I add a little contrast John. to this? Go ahead, John. Well, the state law requires that certain construction projects um, over a certain amount require a designer in order to design the project and, do, and help with the bidding process. Because one of the things the state found many years ago is that when people were doing anything without a designer in certain cases, it wasn't done properly. So the state law requires that projects over a certain amount require a designer. So the designer, so it won't be somebody's backyard cousin who designs it. It has to be a designer who's qualified. When that happens, it has a um, number of people that are uh, proper designers for different projects. Now, in the old days, uh, uh, more frequently, they used the designer selection committee. Now they have, as Jack, taught, as Jack mentioned, they have house doctors, people who design things for the state and the state accepts. Then what the state does, they have a range of percentage of the total contract cost that a designer can, can ask for. So now if you're dissatisfied with a particular designer and you feel that designer didn't do a good job, that's another story. But you have to have a designer on projects over a certain amount in order to comply with the state law. And the reason that was done many years ago is because people were designing their own projects and didn't have experience and knowledge and credentials were causing bigger problems if things were failing. As far as the tiles failing, uh, it depends on how many tiles failed and when. Now, I, can lift, I can bring my camera right now over there and I can lift every single okay. tile. And I know yeah. I'm, not the person I'm, that not, I'm not I'm not saying there, there weren't any. I have no idea and I've never used Abacus, so I don't know anything about them. However, the, the situation is this. When the designer goes in and if part of his, his fee is to do a punch list and make sure the work is done correctly after it's done in accordance with the spec that he drew that's required by law that he do a specification based on his designer credentials. Then he would ask to have those things fixed or we would hold money from that contractor before he gets paid. Now, if one of, if there's a hundred units, let's say, and one of those um, tiles fails after three or four weeks, that's probably something that could happen. It doesn't mean the designer would have necessarily picked that up or that the contractor did a bad job. If after two years or three years, 25 or 30 percent of those tiles failed, and that's either a contractor who didn't do his job or it's the, the, the designer who was supposed to inspect it didn't do his job. Now, the designer is going to inspect it or whoever does the punch list is going to inspect that right after the job is completed. So if he inspects it one month after the job is completed, in the meantime, we're holding that, that amount of money from the, from the amount that's being paid to that contractor, and he'll say it looks all right. We've checked it. I don't see anything falling out, falling off. If three years later, it all starts to fall. There's either some problem with what the designer design for the mastic that goes onto those tiles or the contractor putting them in. And it depends on what percentage fail as to whether or not either the contractor or the designer didn't properly do his job. So that's the perspective I think we have to look at all of this. Thing. So it depends on how many and how, how frequently and how long after this thing failed. Okay. Thanks, so John. we technically, so. So you're saying DHC, so it has to be above a certain amount so they can do a study on it. So that doesn't technically mean that it's going to cost that much. It just means that we put it up that high so we could have a study done to it? No, no, not at all. What it, what it says is that any job that's estimated to cost, because whenever you do public bidding law, you do an estimate of a rough estimate of cost. And any estimate of cost that looks like, and you got to do an honest estimate, you know, a reasonable estimate, you can't just pick a number out of the year. Any job that's estimated to cost more than a certain amount, you need a designer under the state law in order to, to you know, work on that project. And who estimates? I'm sorry, say it again. Who estimates? Who estimates? Well, it will be whoever has to put the project out to bid. You have to look at the project and say, how much is this project roughly going to cost? And the designer is going to get a, if it's over a certain amount, then it has to, you need a designer for that particular project. And then when the project is estimated, 
uh, roughly, then what you do is the designer can only get a certain percentage of that. And DHCD sets the range of the percentages that a designer can get of the total project cost. They might say in this project, it's uh, 2%, 3%, and you have to come up with a number uh, in between that, let's say 2 and 3%, that that's all the designer can get of the total cost of the project. And, that, and that's the estimated cost of the project. You don't know actually at that point until the project is bid, because if the project runs over a great deal, the designer might make a little bit extra, uh, might lose a lot of money, or he might make a little bit extra if the if the bid come the bids from the from the um, uh, contractor come in, contractors the people who are bidding on it come in much lower. But you don't know that at the given time. It's got to be a good faith, what they call a good faith estimate. Mm. Good faith. Okay. Any last minute questions on number I have, eight? I have a comment. It seems like the design. I think if I get this right, the designer is not so much a designer but a project manager that he oversees all the work that's being done. I think that's what John Greco said. Um, and he gets paid a percentage of the total cost of the project uh, by state requirement. Is that right? This $37,520 is a certain percentage of what the whole project cost. And that's what the state requires, whatever that percentage is. Is that correct? That is correct. The state will the state will give you a percentage range that you can negotiate with that with that That's designer right. for within that within that total cost of the project. Correct. So we just uh, in the chat. So you said two thousand and nine, and then we have someone that was here in two thousand and nine that says the wrong glue was used on the tiles. Well, if we can show, and, and if we if you could show, and I and I have no idea how many tiles failed and how long it took them to, to fail. I just don't don't know. But if you could show that a lot of the tiles failed. Within a period of time, the tiles should not fail. And it was a, a, a more than like one out of a hundred tiles, because that's a normal failing rate that somebody, the contractor, may have put one wrong, one in wrong. But if 99 out of 100 tiles fail after a very short period, one tile we know lasts a long period, then right. clearly either the contractor blew it and didn't do the job correctly, or the designer allowed the the wrong specification for the mastic to, to put those tiles on. Uh, he, the designer failed. So somebody would have failed depending on the percentage and how long it took for those to fail. Right. Fiorella, right. Was, there, was the expert the expert that put that in the chat? Are they a, an architect, a contractor? How do they know it was the wrong glue? Aren't they the contractors that are contracting the place that are you know constructing? Oh, how do they know it was the wrong glue? How do they know it's the wrong you just, glue? You just mentioned someone said it's the wrong glue. How yeah, do they the know? Wrong glue was used on the tiles because how do they know? I was told by know? someone who was here, which I was too. What does that mean? Okay. I was told by someone who was here. Yeah. Is it a okay. glue box? Is it an expert? Is it experts on the glue? We should discuss this with DHCD. Maybe Absolutely. DHCD has to do with testing on the glue and realize that it's the wrong glue. I will find you, a way listen, to listen, do this because hold on. I am highly aware of the fact that Hold on, hold on, Fiorella. You're taking people's words for it. Right, we we hired experts. Now you don't like the experts. You don't like what the result was. That's fine. Call DHCD if you have an issue with what we're right. doing. So I'm saying, can we just hold on to this so no. we can all maybe hold? I, I, I would, no, these, we can't. These, people, right, well, these people are approved by DHCD. Well, right. DHCD clearly doesn't know this story, or who knows how many. So no, listen, guys, we, we're Let's talking watch. about. We're talking about something that happened 13 years ago, all right? That we're still dealing with today. That's yeah, the problem of having to real. do a crappy job. We will suffer from it years from now. Certain and things are not meant to last 13 years. So we need to move on. Um, so you're, are your tiles failing at your home after 13 years? How old is your home? <laughs> I've replaced my tiles many times. So, I mean, things... Don't last here. I agree with you. If you have an issue with what he did, you need to reach out to DHCD. Absolutely, because they approved everything we did. Okay. And they approved the vendors, they approved the contractors, they approved the the uh, the assessment of the of the project, and they approved us to pay. Right. You have an issue, you absolutely need to go to DHCD. And coming from you as a tenant will have a major impact. I suggest you call DHCD, absolutely. And Joanne, I suggest you do the same because, I, you know, again, they were all approved. They were all approved again. They all approved to pay. 
because they did the review of the project. Now, DHCD may have a problem. I, I'm with you, Corella. Give them a call and bitch like you can. I would do it. I would do it. And I would do it again because you were unhappy and you're a tenant. But again, they approved everything for us. Okay. Okay. You're right. All right. I'm absolutely all over. I'm, I, and I'd be right behind you if you want me to call. Right. But Thank absolutely, you. let's go talk to those guys. All right, but, one last question. Agat, go ahead. I just, something to consider is uh, materials and uh, always get improved upon over the years. Mm -hmm. For instance, we used to use asbestos siding and um, different mastics and UFI insulation, urea formaldehyde, mm -hmm. which is now outlawed. So over time, things improve and materials improve. And maybe it wasn't the best uh, specification at the time. Um, and maybe people learn by that and, uh, it does fail. Things do fail over time. And you just have to do the best you can. It was, you know, things are going to keep improving different kinds of sightings. On I just want to make sure that we are doing the best we can. That's why I, I want to make sure that we are because I, which, I, which, which is, which is why we hire a, a good architect. Right. And oh, advocates oh. is respected by the state. Yeah. If well, has that's concern, if you're really concerned with those guys. And if you do, I tell you, if you're a little, I, I would just raise the issue. Welcome to the state process. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful so far. I, um, Absolutely, I, Fira, I'm with you, man. Let's, let's... I think it came up because it's the same designer, which, as I understand it, is sort of the project manager. Mm -hmm. And there were questions about what would he, this person is doing the study. I think that's was whether they had full confidence in this designer, the state has a long list of people who are um, qualified, according to them, to do this work. This isn't the only person they have. So, um, so that just raised some questions about it. I have I haven't seen these kitchen floors, so I'm not an expert on this. But I think it's uh, what seems to be an ex a concern about the tenants from the tenants. I'm more concerned about how we got $37,520. Now, a project manager has a lot of different parts to the job. And it's, I guess, a percentage of the total cost. And then I heard it was a percentage. Then I heard there's a range of a percentage. So um, I, was, I would think that anybody, project manager or designer, would submit an itemized bill. You know, I went to four meetings. I spent two days supervising the work, putting in the locks. And when it wasn't wasn't a requirement from the state, it's not a requirement. I mean, it, it, if if the state required it, they would do it. We, you know, they are doing what they need to do for the state to approve it. I, I don't I don't understand what your concern is. I, I understand that you think it's high and it's a price, yeah. but again, the state approved it. If we have issues with that. We need to go to DHCD. They're not required to send an itemized bill. And John Greco, tell me if I'm wrong, but it, it it's the process. Yes, and if they and if they find that there's some hidden condition that creates something entirely different than they bid on, they have to submit that, and that's very difficult to get. Contractor would have a get a would have a better chance of getting something for a hidden condition than the architect would. Because the architect is expected, the designer is expected to know the materials that can be used, the amount of time it takes to do the job, and general conditions. Because that's one of the things, one of the reasons you're hiring that a designer is because that designer has expertise in, in predicting the kind of problems that are going to be in a job with regard to cost of materials, uh, effective materials, uh, uh, installation issues, that kind of thing. So uh, remember, the designer also has to do the uh, bid package, help with preparing the bid package, and all. So um, taking a look at the credentials of the of the contractors who bid, see if they've done a good job on previous jobs. And in uh, DHCD, with, in, in conjunction with DCAM, the Division of Capital Asset Management, will disqualify contractors, for example, who have a bad history of doing work on on public projects, whether they whether they're effective on doing it or whether they do it carefully and productively. That only you know, and it probably depends on uh, do they get them all or do they get twenty percent, ninety nine percent. But nevertheless, that's one of the functions they do, and that's what they do with yeah. the contract. Not the, one well, the, the state probably has a list of the duties of the designer. I thought a designer was just 
designing something, but it seems like they're a project manager, which is a much larger job. So I understand this better. And I don't quite understand if there's a range of percentages, but I guess the state decides on the, on the fee. Uh, pretty much, yes. But not within the range. They choose well, because the what, they may, what they may say, Joanne, is they may say on this kind of a project, the state will approve somewhere between two and 4%. And depending yeah. on how they determine di how difficult that that project is, they may say this one's going to be a two percent or a three percent or whatever. So That's something they'll, they'll do. Okay, thank you. We have a comment from Marion. Uh, hold on, hold on, man. Hold on, man. I'll run the meeting here. Okay. So. Um, no, I have a question actually. So you know how the roof had like a twenty-five year expiration date. Does is does that come with every project? Well, that's. Oh, if I may, may, uh, may I answer that? Uh, yeah, go ahead, John. Yeah. What they generally do is, depending if it's a roofing project, it depends on what the architect feels should be designed. The designer feels should be put into the contract. Should it be a, a 25 year roof or should it be a 30 year roof? Should it be architectural shingles or another kind of shingles? And that's one of the reasons why you're looking into the designer's uh, expertise because you don't want somebody to put down 25 year shingles as part of the spec when for a few more dollars, uh, you might put down 30-year architectural shingles that will look better and last a little bit longer and give you a better warranty for a few more short, short dollars. But if asphalt materials are going up, um, you know, geometrically, they might say it's not worth going for that another five years. We're going to do a 25-year shingle. So that's up to the designer to make that decision pretty much. And that's one of the things you're paying the designer for, that designer's expertise. Many of these designers do specific things, but some, some of the designers have two or three areas of expertise, not 10, they might only have two or three. They have people on, one that might be good on roofing, another one that might be good on electrical panels. So they might be bidding on just those two types of jobs because that's in-house what their designers have expertise in. Right, so with that being said, my question is, do we still have the paperwork of the tiles? Can we maybe see what expectation we had on how long they were supposed to last? Yeah, you could uh, probably- I'm sure we do. If you could pull that, you could take a look at it. The biggest question you would have, I mean, I have no, I have no idea how many years ago this was done and how many are failing, but if you were to do a litigation, um, let's say 15 years later that some tiles fell off, would um, a certain percentage of tiles falling off after 15 years be something you could, you could succeed in litigation? And then if you did, now do you blame the architect or the designer for what the designer designed, or do you blame the contractor for not doing it correctly? Because when the designer um, who does, let's say the punch list, the architect who does the punch list to make sure everything's done right, he does it shortly after the job is completed because he, he withholds a certain percentage. So to take care of any uh, any things that weren't done correctly, so the contractor doesn't get all the money until all those things are checked. But he's not gonna wait you know, seven years to check that because they, they, you have to pay the contractor within a certain number of days after the punch list is completed. So you can't say, yeah. I'm gonna wait 10 years to see what happens. That's the Which problem. is, as you know, that's what we do. We vote. We vote on the approvals after we receive uh, the, the approvals and the punch list and everything else. Ensure that it's done. So, all right. So we're still on number eight here. Do we have a motion to approve um, number eight? Yeah, I move to approve number eight. We have a second. Second. So moved by Gar, second by Joanne. All in favor, Gar? Yes. Joanne. Yes. Uh, Fiorella. So if I agree with this, can I still like, should I say no where I'm thinking the company is no good or should I still vote? So um, confused. Well, if I vote yes, I call DHCD and still make the complaint. Should I vote no? I mean, I think, I, I think you're confusing apples and oranges. I think, yeah, as Nick said, go back, sit with Jack, find the, de the data for the tiles, research, get on that track. This is a totally different um, thing. Uh, it's it's a totally different project. It's nothing to do with tiles, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and the and but I think you're confusing the architect with the with the contractor. Okay. You know, you labor it. But I'm sure 13 years ago when they finished all those projects, I'm sure the tiles stuck and they last great for years. But um, but at this point, we need to um, we need to move forward with the Great Village thing. So um, so yes. with the conscious. So your yes and Nick had to. Um, Nick, your vote, are you able to vote? He had to jump off, off the, on the phone. Yeah, I see him still on here, though. Um, OK, well, I'm a yes, so we've got a, an approval there anyways. Um, so and we'll put down Nick as um, um, 
absent voting at this moment. Uh, Nick just texted me yes, but we need a voice vote based on the uh, the, the um, open meeting laws, but that's okay. So move on to number nine. So approval of uh, CBI Consulting to Design of Services, the 52-4 for the housing building roof replacement. Notice there's a different outfit here. So any questions on this one? Okay, do we have a motion for that one? Wait, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm for Waterfield Design Group Designer Services contract? No, that's not interesting. CBI. What? Number nine. We're on number nine. On You're number on number nine. nine. Okay. I must be looking at some old agenda. So, this is this is for the housing building roof replacement. Oh, so we gotcha. I see it. Okay. So you have vote? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Did we have a motion on this one? Yeah, I move to uh, approve uh, the CBI consulting designer services contract. Do we have a second? And Fiorella seconds. Um, all in favor of Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian's a yes. Nick? Let's go on record. Nick is texting me yes, but I'm not sure it counts because it's got to be voice. Um, we'll move down to number 10. Approval of Waterfield Design Group. Design services contract in the amount of 13.5 for the Monotomy Manor um, flood elevation survey. DCH project, DCHD project. And I would just like to add to this. Yeah, this do you want to comment on this one, Jack? This is funded 100% of a grant um, to study and see what types of um, types of projects could be could be used to address um, climate change and resiliency um, efforts down in Monotony Manor. So it's 100% uh, funded through the state. It's not a housing authority at all, but they do still require our approval. Cool. Any questions on that? Questions? I think it's because it the floodplain is watering the Nottoway Manor. Anyway, I talked to Jack about it. I think yeah. the study, right, is going to happen prospectively as the uh, water plane moves forward and how we can um, best help our buildings from having water yeah. in the basements and so forth. Is that right, Jack? It's, it's going to be um, all inclusive of, of the issues or the concerns related to um, the flooding and other climate change concerns down in Monotomy Manor. It will help the Housing Authority continue to push towards being climate resilient. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, do we have a motion for that? Motion, motion for number 10. Number 10. I motion to approve number 10. Do we have a second? Second. Yes. Oh, Joanne, second. So we have a motion by Fiorella and second by Joanne. All in favor for number 10, Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. And Nick is a yes on text. Again, not sure if it counts, but uh, Brian's a yes. So we have a, a motion carries. Um, number 11, acceptance of D. DHCD Compliance Reserve Award for $80,000, 320. The housing building fire up, alarm upgrade, asbestos abatement. That was in your project, uh, in your packet as well. Any questions on this one? Okay, do we have a motion to approve this one? I move to approve the DHCD Compliance Reserve Award for 80320 for the housing building. I second that. Moved by Gar, second by Fiorella. All in favor, Joanne? Yes. Gar? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian's a yes. And Nick's a text yes again. So uh, um, motion <laughs> carries. Um, number 12. Approval of the Emergency Community Preservation Act CPA funding application for the housing building electrical <laughs> panel. You want to comment on that one? Yes. So um, this was a CPA application that we put together um, pretty much immediately after we, we we saw that issue at the Hauser building. Again, that issue was addressed, um, but due to our, our concerns related to Federal Pacific Electrical Panels, um, we wanted to get that project addressed immediately. And um, we feel that CPA emergency 
funding will help us do that. So this application is, is a way in which we can move towards that goal and get that addressed in a uh, timely fashion. Great. Do we have a motion for that one? Yeah, I, I move, move to uh, approve emergency community CPA application for housing building. I have a second. I second it. So we have a motion by God, second by Joanne. All in favor? Uh, yes. Win? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian's a yes. And Nick's a text us again. Um, that motion carries. Number 13, rule of, of the high lab application for the monotony metal window replacement. Jack? So, so what I'm asking for is approval for our submission of a high leverage asset preservation program, otherwise known as high lab, um, for the monotony metal window project. And, and building envelope repairs. And, and while we're, we're still working on the application itself, um, my, my goal would be to apply for three to one, a three to one ratio of funding based off of the funding that we've already gotten from the town. However, pending what funding is available through the state, we'll, we'll apply for whatever funding we're possibly able to get. Um, so this, this will allow me to submit the application as soon as we are able to do it. I have a question. Go ahead, Joanne. Yeah, um, you must have had a dollar amount. I'm sorry, I somehow missed this in what you sent out. So I apologize for not thoroughly digesting it. But 3.6? Three, 3. Yeah. Three to one ratio, three. but what is the amount that you? 3.6, So i um, sorry. So initially, uh, Joanne, I was looking at you know, one to one based off some other conversations that I had um, with some individuals at the state. So that would be a one to one ratio, three point in front of three point six. Uh, but based off of some new conversations that I have had, you know, there's the potential I could ask for even up to three to one. Um, but that's pending available funding. So that's that's what I'm I'm, I'm okay. hoping to be so able to apply for as much as possible. We just have to submit ratio. We don't have to say what the total amount would be. Yeah, we're just because I mean, I'm going to try to continue to leverage applicable funds too. So if I'm able to get additional funds to leverage, then that ratio could be even higher. So you didn't submit any. That's total correct. Amount. Okay. Yeah, so we haven't submitted anything yet. We're still waiting for additional additional data and, um, and information that we can use to make it a really competitive application. Oh, okay. we approve. Uh, can, can I make a motion? Yep. Yep. I move to approve the high lap application for Monotomy Manor Window repl Replacement Project. Second. Second. Okay. Moved by Gar, second by Joanne. Uh, all in favor? Fella? Yes. Uh, Gar? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Nick is a text yes again, and Brian's a yes, so the motion carries. Number 14, status of AHA Travel Foundation. Just a quick update. Uh, the foundation has been created. We have our EIN number. We have our designation um, from Secretary of State Office of Travel Foundation. We can start hitting the pavement, writing for grants and solicitation. Uh, we'll have a meeting in April. Um, and go over some other things, but we're we're rocking and rolling here. So um, again, the purpose of this foundation is to support the health and well-being of our tenants throughout our facilities. So it's a wide open range of things that we can do. Everything from uh, supporting different functions to um, uh, just just a wide range. We can we can go in many different directions. So uh, you know, um, it's pretty exciting. Um, I think there's Great potential here. There's a lot of foundations that give to things like this. Um, I think, as we discussed before, uh, we could be more successful in requesting funding to a charitable foundation um, as a separate entity versus asking nobody's going to write a check to the Arlington Housing Authority. Um, so uh, we look forward to Joanne's experience in grant writing and uh, um, aggressive attack to all these great grants and banks and everything else. So um, um, let's, uh, that's exciting news. So I just want to report that out. 
Any questions on that? Okay, approval of the minutes number 15, minutes from two, uh, February 16th. Any corrections, modifications? If not, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I have a motion to approve the minutes of 216, 2022. There a second? Yes, second. second. So motion by Fiorella, second by Gar. All in favor, Gar? Yes. Duan? Yes. Fiorella? Yes. Brian's a yes, and Nick's a text yes. That motion carries. All right, let's go back to Fiorella. You had some things. Uh, so folks, in the future, um, anything you want to add it to the agenda, email it to me the week prior. Uh, we we post this on um, Friday, usually. It gets posted Friday or first thing Monday. Um, so technically, any unless it's applicable to these, these items here, we're not allowed to discuss it unless we gave prior notice. But uh, since you had, you had budget issues, I think budget issues are are certainly within the scope of the things we've discussed here. So if there's something other than that, Fiorella, then you know, maybe I would suggest we'll put on the agenda for next meeting. But let's, like I said, let's start. So what's your what's your question? I think that all of it will really um, be part of what we discussed today. Um, and I am asking for clarification. I'm not stating these things, just so you guys know. Um, the first thing that I wanted to so I've written the invoices for these things down if you guys want me to send it to you. Um, yeah, and it's about like the amounts of money the businesses are going to and singular names that I want clarification on. There's one for Monotomy Manor for fire alarm inspections for $600. And I was wondering where, like what fire, um, what's it called, inspections, what fire alarms were inspected. Oh, okay. So you have questions about the checkbook. The the data that we get in our packet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, um, I think certainly, simply pick up the phone and call Jack, um, and you can get it right from immediately. I'm mean, she'd be more than happy to, to you know, explain every item there. I mean, he'd have the stuff at his fingertips, um, so it's, he's probably in a better position to do that. But um, okay, I just felt like transparency in general would have been best, but okay. Well, you know what? I mean, I don't want to. The problem is we've put him on the spot before, and and um, and it's not fair to him because he doesn't have the data in front of him. So, I mean, if there's a six thousand dollar check to the fire alarm company, you know, he doesn't know exactly what they do. He may, but he may not know exactly what they did at that moment in time. So, I think in fairness to him, um, and you said you emailed him a list of these. I emailed, so I wrote a whole, like, you know, all of it down. So I can definitely just send him that document and yeah. uh, we can discuss it that way. Yeah, do that. So let's do that. Let's send him that document um, and and you go over with him. Um, I just want to say that even after we go over it and all of that, I definitely do want to add that to the next meeting. Yeah, I, but let's let's give him the opportunity to, to address it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. Well, the meeting. So. So when you get your packet and you get the check register, but if you have questions about any of those things, get them an email immediately so he can research it and tell you exactly what we bought for that six thousand um, dollars. Understanding that, you know, this is a massive operation, and you know, he doesn't know everything we buy. It could be a Chris issue, um, you know. So we really wanted to give him the opportunity to, to uh, do that. And and listen, transparency. That's why you all get a copy of this. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important, and um, I have no problem putting this on the agenda as a, as an agenda item, actually. So maybe we do is add this as an agenda item um, to uh, you know review the check register, and that would allow you then to to go over it uh, publicly, um, item by item. But but more specific, if it's one particular, two particular things. Give him a heads up so he knows exactly what it is so he can address it. Yeah, I apologize. It took me a while on him to learn and all this information and on numbers and all that. So it took me a while to really be able to. No, no, that's that's cool. And, um, you know, unfortunately, our debate early, I don't know if you and Joanne would, you know, having Starbucks coffee tonight, but uh, it been something. But, uh, you know, even this, this bidding stuff, I think, you know, now that we can take the face mask off and we can be human again, um, 
you know, perhaps we should plan something in the spring that we can come face to face. Um, and maybe have John Greco and Rich Conlon come in and re-explain things. Um, we'll put a list together, for instance, re-explain the bidding system. And, and uh, also, uh, Jack, maybe we, you could show them the system that you have, the capital improvement system. The software that we use is, is obviously a state software. And it, it gives you, um, if you plug in, I want to change 10 windows, it gives you estimations in terms of expenses and stuff. And that's what he uses. Um, so I, I think it'd be, I think you'd be better educated to understand this. And, and I think when most everybody came on, it was COVID. So we went right virtually. So, so let's, let's think of something like that for the spring. Um, and Jack and I, let's put together some, you know, a, a simple, um, agenda and then we'll get it out to people and they can add to it. And so anything and everything you want to understand about housing, uh, we can do it in that one one little symposium and, and sure we can make it open to the public out of a problem that um jack did present the great powerpoint to um uh, one of the town organizations the other day um maybe you should send that i would recommend you send that out to the yeah jack. it was a great uh <laughs> it was very well education done. yeah it was a great education in terms of what the aha is made up of and and you know one thing you'll be very surprised when you see the the thousands of people that are on the waiting list to come into the properties. Um, it's staggering. It shows that obviously there's a housing problem, but um, so why don't we do those two things? So um, we'll do those for the, for the next meeting uh, for the spring, excuse me, Jack. And just one other thing, just to plug in, you know, if any, any board member wants to attend any training, whether it's board member training or anything like that, um, we can definitely discuss that and, and, um, and sign board members up for that if they want to have a better understanding of, you know, you know, the, the board member process or the procurement process or things like that. Those are things we can definitely look into. Yeah, I haven't got any of those from NARO. I mean, are they stacked yeah. up again? They are. Yeah, so. so I went to one. Um, so any A conference? Is Fiorella, is that good enough? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I apologize, I got to agitate you, but Abacus just really grinds my gears because <laughs> I know about the kitchen because I'm here, so. Yeah, I think. Um, um, and I think in your maintenance meeting, I mean, as I'm listening to the debate, you know, what's going on in my head is, well, how many units have this problem? I mean, have we re-glued the tiles down? Have we redone the floors? I mean, these are all things for the maintenance meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps, um, you know, Jen should bring that up in the maintenance meeting and, and do a survey. We should have a survey down there of all the units. How many have, you know, and we're not talking one tile, how many have more than more than one tile, more than 10, you know, is it, is it how widespread? And, you know, there's a way of fixing these things, um, but, but at any rate, um, so let's move on to the next uh, number 16 LTOs. Um, Pam, Pam, you still on Pam Hauser Winslow? I don't see her. Yeah. There she is. I am here. Pam, any words of wisdom for us? Well, first of all, I want to thank the Housing Authority for the new cots that we have. Half of them were put away and hidden on the tenants, so that'll be a good thing. The other thing is, I just have a quick question. Are you going to be going to um, in-person board meetings soon, or are we going to continue with Zoom going on and on and on? Uh, first of all, we can't do it until I think the state mandate that came out was like July. You still have to do these till July. And, um, you know, honestly, I wasn't really a fan for it, but I think it does. Uh, and we, we don't have 40 people watching anymore. Um, and as I look, we have, um, we have 15 attendants, but many of them are housing employees and, and, and a handful of residents. Um, I think the Zoom thing does uh, allow a lot of flexibility. So I, I think maybe we'll chat about it as a board. Um, and I mean, if we went back face to face, the room certainly wouldn't, wouldn't house the 40 people that used to show up here, but, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll discuss, I mean, do you, do you miss us, Pam? Is that why, uh, yes, I miss you. Um, <laughs> the last thing is, um, I hate to bring this up, but there's so much talk about windows down monotony, Nana. We still have 44 apartments in this building. They never got new windows. 
And I hope that the housing authority is looking into the funding to, to get those windows replaced. So it's just to think as I'm getting complaints from people living in the middle, those 44 yeah. tenants, you know, complaining, how come we get some, most of us got yeah. new windows and they didn't. Yeah. So it's just, it's just something I hope the housing authority is looking into to rectify soon. Agreed. And that's, yeah. all, that's all I have. I hope you all have a pleasant evening. All right. Thank you. Um, moving on. I don't, don't see anybody from Chestnut or Cusack. I see um, um, Jen Hernandez. Thanks, Brian. Um, so last month I mentioned that the Tenant Association would be passing out a maintenance survey to all the units down here. Um, and we've actually done that. And um, just to expand on it a bit, we broke it up room by room and um, address potential issues with more experience in each room. And um, so that the floors were covered on that, that survey, Brian. So we will have information shortly. Excellent, excellent. That's yep. yeah. The residents have actually been really cooperative um, and we're willing to do the survey. It's been done anonymously. However, it was broken up um, by area and by building. So uh, each survey had a number on it that you know corresponded to each building or each unit. Um, therefore, you know, we figured that if it was anonymous, but um, that we'd have more of a, a response. Um, so when I collect, the, we're, we're actually starting to collect them now. Uh, we've got about a third of them so far. And, um, you know, once we have the them all, we'll just uh, compile the data and um, look forward to the results and sharing them with, um, with all of you. Great, great. And I'm sure Chris can come up with a, uh, battle plan in terms of how to attack some of these things. Yeah, yeah um, it was it was really thorough. Um, and if you guys would like, you know, I'd be happy to show it show it to yeah, you. Yeah, could you there. could you do that? Could you email out one of the blanks, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. It was yeah. um, you know, we tried to be pretty thorough, and um, we, then at the bottom we left a, a spot um, for you know in case we missed something or mm -hmm. there was something that we didn't think of. Um, yeah. And we included um, pests in that as well. Um, so we could have uh, an overall idea of, and it's actually, that's the one thing I've, I've actually noticed. It's, it's a lot more than I thought. So um, I think this will be really helpful to you guys and to us so that we can, um, you know, work together and, and work on these things because some of them are small and they won't be huge capital improvement projects. Um, and, but it'll make a big difference in each unit. Good, good, very good. Okay, so next, um, Jack, can you remind me when the energy audit um, that Chris had referred to at the president's meeting? Could you remind me when that was, when that is, or was, or? I, I can't, I can't remember what you're referring to. I, I know that a lien application, maybe that's what he was referring, was what he was referring I thought, to. I thought, he said somebody, I thought he said somebody was coming out, um, but mm -hmm. we can check that later. Um, yeah, and, I, yeah. Um, the grievance procedure, Jack. So about three weeks ago, around, um, actually, the, I think it was the same, similar to the day, around the day that you had emailed me the grievance procedure, mm -hmm. um, I had spoken with um, Rich, Richard Bob, who's who's our representative from DHCD, Brian? Uh, ben Stone? Oh, it's not Bob Pelletier. Bob Pelletier. Bob Pelletier. Yeah, yep. so I spoke with his, um, with his boss, Carrie Souser, and that particular day, um, Jack, she had said that the um, the grievance procedure had been approved. And um, I asked her, oh, when? Because, you know, we had, uh, we had spoken in, via email and, you know, you weren't aware of that. So I said, oh, great, that's wonderful. When, was, when did that happen? And she said, oh, recently. So if you want to maybe check in with them, because yeah. you know, they said it was already done. I, I sent them another follow-up email today. So hopefully they can clarify that soon. Yeah, so you might want to... I don't know if you messaged her, but you might want to message her since she was the one who's, who said that it was she, it was approved. And that was like three weeks ago. She was also on that email, so she'll be able to, to okay. uh, contribute to that. Okay, well, hopefully she'll be able to get you an answer. Um, and I, I know we don't want to talk about Abacus anymore, but I just had one question. Um, <laughs> so um, they were, with, was that who was here um, recently at um, one of our units on Gardner Street? Um, looking at the windows, Jack? I would believe so. If it was part of the window study, it would be advocates. Yeah. Okay. So um, 
so I'm just a little concerned because they went to one unit. Um, well, that's what I was told uh, the first uh, one week. And then the next week I was told they went to S another unit, but it was in the duplexes. But um, I'm not so sure, like, is that all they're gonna go to? Well, they wouldn't be inspecting every window. I mean, this is- Not every window, Brian, but I mean, one unit? In each yeah, because they're, they're, they're coming up with um, approximate measurements and things like that. So it's, I mean, the, you know, it's, so it's not like they have to inspect every single window in the place. I mean, they, they right. look at them and then they come up with a plan. Right, right. I understand not every yeah. window in the place. Absolutely, of course, that would be ludicrous. Yeah. But um, so if maybe we could find out if they actually did go to the duplexes, because I, I'm pretty sure that they did not. But if I'd like to be proved wrong. Um, so because those windows are totally different than the bricks, obviously. So could we try and find, could Jack, could sure. you look into that maybe? So they're still in the process of their study. So if they haven't been there, they, they will be there. Okay. Um, but we can definitely confirm, you know, whether they've been there, when they get, you know, and I'm sure they'll, they'll be there again or they'll be doing whatever they else they need to, to to move forward with their study. Okay. So just try and keep me in the loop if you don't mind. I can follow up to, to find out if they've been to a monotony man or the duplexes so far. Okay. Awesome. Um, now, one other question. So, do we did we get any um, answers as far as what happened last month, um, where where some where the ball was dropped in regards to the entry of the units uh, in Building Eight? Do I need to elaborate? Um, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, okay. Sorry, Ryan. Um, yeah, so I was referring to um, when the the maintenance staff from the other property came and opened the, the basements and the camera people were in the basements for the afternoon and the residents were, you know, we you would ask Jack to get some, uh, some answers or find out about how that actually happened and who, where the ball dropped. Do we find out anything? Because the so residents we, were we, we did do an investigation, um, identified communication breakdowns and, and, um, and are confident that Future communication breakdowns will not happen again, or you know, we'll minimize the risk for it. Um, okay. Um, was anything communicated to the residents that were in that building? You know, telling them, you know, I'm sorry that people were in your homes without your knowledge or anything. Oh, you're referring to notices not going out to the units. To my notices knowledge, not going out to units and the units being left open all day. Yeah, because that's really. They weren't happy about that and they didn't feel very secure. Did the property manager notify them, Jack? Do we know? They did not. They did not have any notification. No, after the fact. After the fact. No. no. To, to the best of my knowledge, no. Yeah. Get you look into it. Yeah. Please, because yeah, yeah they just they feel like they feel like they were just kind of left hanging. Um and nobody really addressed it at all with them whatsoever. Well, um, happen again, yeah. Yeah, I definitely hope not. Um, okay, uh, along the same lines, um, Intellibeam, Jack, uh, you had me emailed me five, five days ago about them, and you were reevaluating. Um, is it is it true that they didn't pull a permit for the work that they did? I, I'm not aware of that. I'll, I'll... Have to look into that, but I'm, I'm, I'm to my knowledge, they followed all the proper procedures. Okay, so um, it, it appears we're not we're not going with them since. So I had gotten an email from Chris um, Monday morning about um, Joe, uh, the electrician, doing um, maintenance on our existing camera network, um, and so he was here Friday when you had emailed me um, saying that you guys were reevaluating and determining if you wanted to proceed with the telebeam, but um. It was a, Joe looked like he was doing um, maintenance on Friday, but um, Chris, Chris's email on Monday, Joe was already here and I think it was Monday and I don't know if he was here Tuesday, but definitely today installing new cameras. And I mean, I think the definition of maintenance is the process of maintaining and or preserving something and installing cameras doesn't necessarily fall under maintenance. So um, <laughs> is Joe gonna be going forward with the Cameras, then it appears, and in, not uh, IntelliBeam. Well, we're still um, reviewing, you know, how we're going to move forward with with IntelliBeam, and Joe Girard is performing some um, 
some some maintenance to see what you, what cameras are salvageable um, as a money savings measure as well as a um, just a way in which we can move forward in the interim. Right, and he installed new cameras as well. He does. Um, it's assigned to him. Huh? He said he does whatever is assigned to him. No, that's fine. I, I just, it's just because we already have, uh, we had the company working on it. And so now, you know, I was made aware that he was doing maintenance and then I saw him installing cameras. So it's just, I'm just wow. trying to clarify what's going on here as far as who's going to be doing it, who's going to get paid to do it. And, um, and there was money budgeted for it. So just trying to understand what's going on. That's all. If, if, yeah, I, I would have to look into it. I'd have to talk to the director of maintenance just to get a better understanding of, of the full scope. Um, just related to maybe there were instances where um, a camera was added to because a camera was no longer operable or- No, there were new, there new, there new cameras in, in different spots. And then one of the fixtures that um, Intellibeam had, had put in the building, they he put a camera in that today. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll look into that. I see. Okay. On what? Wait, just feel a few um, I think that a good step that you could take too maybe might be like grievance procedures towards the things that you've been mentioning with like maintenance and then the eight houses that didn't get a notice and had people in it. Um, I mean, you've mentioned it here, but maybe the next step to figure stuff out you know, if a lot of people feel upset, might be filling out some grievance reports. Yeah, I absolutely can um, speak to them about that and see if they're interested and suggest it to them. Definitely. I mean, unfortunately that until Jack gets a, an official email from Carrie saying approving the grievance procedure that we voted on, he can't distribute it out yet. But, you know, um, okay. uh, it seems that like um, Carrie will probably get back to him soon. Once he's get it, and then he'll distribute it like we talked about. Right, but I mean, they can. Someone can file. They don't. Someone can file a grievance prior to that. I mean, because the housing authority had a grievance procedure in place. This isn't the first one we, that they've had. You guys have had, right? You had one before, Jack. Just I would this think one. So. One would I, would think so. I would think so. I mean, whatever was whatever was in existence, and if they want to do that, that's fine. Yeah. But. Well, that and then um, so one of the state regulations. Right this second, I don't recall which one it was, but. Um, said that the tenant association was supposed to see the grievance procedure and sign it before it was submitted, but it's, you know, I've already, I've looked at it since, so, um, but maybe next time we can follow that regulation. I, hmm? I do believe that we did send something out for the residents to sign just related to the procedure and then also the panelists for the procedure, for the, for the panel. I'm sorry, well, right, for the panel, but it was the procedure itself. Is what it is what the regulation was um, referring to, so maybe just if next time in the future if you update it we could try and just follow the regulation that would be good. Um, but yeah, Carrie said it was approved and that was three weeks ago, Brian. So hopefully she'll like you said she'll get it to him soon. But people should yeah. be able to still file a grievance though. I mean if they if they have one, regardless well, of sure under the old system, but you can't yeah. use the new paperwork until we. With officially, yeah, I'm surprised that she would have told you that three weeks ago and not, not tell us, Jack, though, huh? Yeah, because like Jack and I had communicated via email about the procedure, and he had actually sent it to me the same day that I spoke. She was her. on that email. Carrie was um, on that. No, the email that Jack sent to me. Jack had sent. I had asked Jack for the grievance procedure, a copy of it, and he had sent it to me right back. And so, um, but at the time, and he had said that he, you know it hadn't been approved. He was waiting approval and submitted it. And so when Carrie, I spoke to Carrie, I had spoken to Carrie later that day and she had said, it's approved. And I was like, what? Like, oh, well, Jack, yeah. Jack doesn't know that. You know, I was like, Jack, I, we don't know that Jack doesn't know that. And she's like, oh, well, it was recently, but recently yeah. now it was three weeks down the road, you know? Jack, you need to let Nick back in. All right, what else, Jen, anything else? No, Brian, I think I'm done for tonight. All right. Um, I don't see, I don't have any chats here. Anybody? Um... There was a couple of chats beforehand though. Yeah, we, we, I, I don't have any chats, anybody from, from the public uh, wishing to speak here, so. 
Nobody wants to know if we're going to pay for heat. So, so any other any, any other questions from the board? Jack, anything else? No. No. Nope. Oh, you're asking if I have any questions? No. Okay. Uh, so, do we have a motion to adjourn? Well, actually, Marta would like to speak. What's your question? Hello. Yes. Hi. How are you, everybody? Good. Good. How are you? Perfect. Nothing. Thank you so much for uh, taking my question. Uh, I have a few ones, okay? But first, nothing, let me go back on time. A uh, few go, uh, weeks ago, I asked you, Jack, about the camera. You remember? You didn't have the, the question, and you're going to find out, like normally you do, uh, about the, the, the question they asked you. The one was why they went, they have to go inside in the basement and where it's going to connect the electric power. But, so I think at that point I'd indicated that, you know, there's a lot of aspects to the, to the security camera project. And, you know, I, I'm obviously not a subject matter expert in everything. And there's obviously certain components of it, given it's the, what it is that, you know, we wouldn't be able to really talk in detail about, but what I can, verifies that there are any cameras in individual basements and I can verify that individual's electricity is not being tapped into for those cameras. Great. What? Sorry, clarify that for me, please. In simplest word, don't go so far. Do I don't want to understand wrong these things? <laughs> so Mark, Jack, Jack just said that there are no cameras installed in anybody's basement and nor is anybody's electricity being used for the cameras? Okay, so, but what he, the, the, he didn't answer the question. Any of the polls? He did. You no, know, so. No, no, he said the, I, they, they don't, they cannot tell me why they did it. And they don't, they, they don't connect uh, uh, from me or from our house with the electricity. But he didn't say, where are they going to take the, the uh, where are they going to take the electricity? And the second thing, he didn't say why they going in the basement. Okay, well, yeah, unfortunately, um, I think I might have something that might help with this. Go ahead, Fiorel. Um, so I was trying to ask around about this too because I was a little concerned too. Mostly how the letter came out, it sounded like they were going to put cameras in the basement. I think mm. I sent you. I read it right. to you. Something. It was crazy. Yeah. But um, I did ask, and I did receive an explanation of why they had to come to the basements. I don't remember, but I think that it might make me and Marta feel better, and probably a lot of other tenants, if maybe we can see the meters because I did hear that you'll have to add another meter where that will be charged to the cameras. So I think that maybe if we know where these meters at and we're making sure that the tenants know, you know, here's your meter, here's their meeting, and here's the here's the camera meter, I th think it'll it'll help us all out. Fiorella, so sorry, it's Jen here. Um, Fiorella, so the one that's on my building, there's an um there's a meter on the end of my building, and I believe it goes, it it's um connected to the main main office. I'm, I, I think I'm on point with that, but so I, as far as, I think that there's meters, if you look on the buildings, I might be wrong, but if you look on the buildings, there's boxes on the buildings. Um, mm -hmm. Typically those have, have meters in them. I haven't, they're not open, so I can't see them, but I mean, typically that's um, what Maybe they, we uh, can just have a walk through just to make a hundred percent sure. Where's the extra meter? And we just want to make sure. And I don't blame you. I felt the same way. Um, and but, it's not just that, uh, uh, Jack. I assume that you want to know if somebody goes to your house to do anything. You want to know the why they going inside of your house to do it. Is your right to know everything that's happening in your home because it's your home? That's what I ask you. If you can be so kind to give me answer to that. And uh, I'm talking about the cameras. I see around because they they they. Other tenants uh, uh, told me, and I noticed they really the level where the cameras are put it on is too low, and they can see inside the our houses. So I I am concerned about that too. Okay, I don't. That doesn't. Uh, so, yeah, what if you had um, Christmas? 
we'll walk through down there with Fiorella uh, and and just go over. Um, I mean, Brian, I, could I could I go on that walk through as I well? I was going to say, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, not I think. Way. You know, I, I I would be extremely shocked if if a camera was able to look in your house. I you know. So Brian, think, Brian, like, can I just can I interject for a sec? So the cameras, no. um, they're not on the fixtures yet. The ones that. Marta's referring to the really low ones, and they're actually they're directly behind. Um, so if you have the if you have in the middle of the courtyard and you look to your right, in, right in the middle of it, they're on uh, pretty much directly um, behind someone's back door, um, and they're very low. And but there's no cameras on them yet, Brian. So mm. it's really a walkthrough isn't you know isn't going to really do anything right now because there's no cameras on those fixtures yet. And um, looking at the cameras, Brian, isn't going to help. Like the, if, if they're going to actually still put the cameras there, they've only put, like I said, one on my, the fixture on my building. And so, I mean, but until like I had asked Jack, I said, you know, it would be nice and helpful to all of the residents because everybody is really concerned about the level of, that they're at. If someone from the tenant association, either myself or Marta or the three of us, if once they're all in place, if you could show one of us at least that they're not going to go into the units, that would be yeah. very helpful because I think that's, I think I, agree. I think that's fine. I, let's do that. So because uh, oh, I mean I know a lot of the residents, and if I you know someone they trust sees that their homes are not being you know invaded, then I think that it might right. help all of us. Yeah. So let's do this. That, that, that makes sense. So obviously the cameras are put there for security purposes. You know. Which I Problems for whatsoever, you know, like safety, yeah. and security, things. Yeah, definitely. The privacy. So why don't we do this? Once the thing is all set up and operational, um, I think it's appropriate if we have the president um, and the association come up to the office wherever they're being broadcast, and you can look and verify they were not looking into anybody's kitchen, and um, I I, and then I you can spread the word. I don't. I I'm don't. Not gonna tell you remember, I'm I joined that. About the cameras, it's not what I'm. The, the goal is the goal is that people can rest easy and feel safe and yeah. not in. Right, right, exactly. So let's do that. So once okay. they're done, once they're done, we'll we'll get in touch with you, Jen. Mm -hmm. uh, have you come up and view them and verify that they're not looking into kitchens and stuff? Um, All right, I appreciate that very but, much. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now about the agenda today, you know, I have a few questions. Remember, the uh, I am coming from another culture, so bear with me. Uh, the studies that you are doing for the window, uh, okay? Uh, the you spending money to make this studio, uh, and I don't know if it, if you really are doing in the empty houses or or, or is in, a, in in all the houses anyway. It's just right. empty. Mara. They went to one so far. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mara, we, we, Mara, can we can we move on from that? I think we've beat up the windows sufficiently. I mean, um, I have full faith in Jack and um, with this window. No, 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 no. It cannot, don't have nothing to do for do you just say in all in the agenda. I want to ask you something. The process, normally the process for any project that you have it is long. It's very long because they have to pass for a lot of steps, okay? So a student is going to be made for different projects all the time. So to, to save time for different projects that we can do in the future, that student cannot be done for the whole house and a step to do one part, another part, and another part. And every time we have to spend money in that studio and time in do, in do it. I don't know if you explain myself. No, I see what you're saying. You're saying that is there any way that during the study for the windows, they can also uh, maybe I think she's asking more of like, can we have a general study? Because right now we're going to pay for the windows and then they're going to look at the bricks and see that. So she's saying, can we have like a general study that actually goes to the whole house? Well, actually, um, unbeknownst to you, Jen, what you just did in terms of this survey. Mm -hmm. will platform to go go forward so for instance and it kind of falls into answering your question Mata. so if jen's survey comes in and if we've you know if you get 90 95 participation and and everybody's reporting um 
um, leak bathrooms, for instance. Well, then we know to now do a study on the, whether we do it internally or externally. Now we review every bathroom in the entire complex, and then we mm -hmm. can replace them. So, so I, you wouldn't hire a company just to go through the building and, and do a, a survey on every aspect of the unit. But I think with Jen's survey that you just did, I think it gives us an opportunity. It gives Chris, Chris Partridge, the director of maintenance, an opportunity to, to look. Yeah, but, but when would you have a project, any project that you have in mind, you have to do a following procedure. One of the procedures for all the, pro the, the, the projects is the same. It's, uh, you know, to uh, do this to them about any, any problem that we have. Mm. I don't. Um, I'm not. I'm not understanding it. What were we saying? So what I'm trying to say is, okay. every time, every time did you do uh, any projects? Okay. In this moment, we were talking about Windows. So Windows is going to take different steps to they can be made. Okay. They're going to be students. They're going to. Be Go to bear, they're going to be uh, another things and you know, different steps. And they take a long time to do these projects. No? Th that's what I understand. Oh, yeah, these so, things take a long time. Yeah. So if one the, the, the step, this oh, is you have to do it because it's in the proceeding for any project that you want it, is to do that one student. If you do one general, you don't have to pay it a hundred times to do with different students, you do one one. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. So, but the, uh, the simple answer is, no, you can't do that. The, okay. state, the state directs a lot of this stuff. Anything over $50,000 has got to be managed as John Greco went into a uh, great deal on. So it's, so, uh, you know, um, there's all sorts of hoops we got to jump through, red tape. I mean, it's it's, Believe me, if we had the money and the ability just to run this as a private company, we would be done with all this stuff in 20 minutes. And uh, but unfortunately, we've got to follow all the state guidelines um, and the bureaucracy that goes with it. So it's it's just okay. unfortunate. But I I understand. And now yeah. my last question is about the you know it's not going to talking about the kitchen. By the way, I moved into Sunset Night, so I can be you know. The, 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 the kitchen. But I want to talk about the kitchen in kitchen. But history helps you to don't repeat the same mistakes. Okay? So, what I see in, the, in our kitchen is the problem, the big problem is the, the material they use it for the floor, for the counter, get a very cheap and bad material. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you have a cheap material in any construction, it's not going to be durable for years. So if you're going to spend every year, you can get, do a cheaper material. But if you want something that's durable for years, you have to pay a little more for a better material. Yeah. So again, again, the, the simple answer is it's okay. called the bidding system. So when the state does work like this, they don't spec it out for beautiful Italian marble tile. They'll spec it out for VCT, which is much more inexpensive. Right. And don't be condescending. Okay. She's yeah. not asking for the most expensive thing. She's asking for. Well, like, I'm going to pay. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. So, okay. let, let me finish. Well, from are you countries, in, the, in the kitchen, do you house? What kind of material you have in your floors and what kind of material you have in your counters? So let me, and I'm not being condescending. I'm stating a point. The state doesn't allow us to put fancy, very expensive stuff. They no, typically no, get not cheaper talking stuff. About, I'm not talking about marble, okay? I'm talking about durable, uh, sustainable material, okay? Because the floor, our floor is not a tile. Really, it's not a tile. It's a plastic thing or yeah, a paper. So, it's called so, tile. A, a, a big difference between a luxury material and a durable material. You got my point? I so, get your point, but yeah. I don't think you understand. The state doesn't spec out fancy tile. 
They specced out when they built those places and redid the kitchens in 2009, they specced it out for VCT tile, which was inexpensive at the time. And that's what they spec out. They're not going to put, you know, marble or ceramic tile. And I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just no. telling you. It is. I don't think she's looking for that. Like, I don't think that's what she's getting at. Like, I mean, even any, anything is better than what, what they put there, Brian. It's, it's really pitiful. And mm -hmm. um, it, you, you could see, like, it's at Market Basket. It's similar at Market Basket or in a doctor's office. Like, it's really bad, Brian. And so I don't think she's not looking for marble. She's not looking for ceramic tiles. She's not looking for anything spectacular. Just something that, you know, might, might not break when you, or suck, or, or pick uh, up when, when you vacuum. And I agree. And, and so I agree. I, my my yeah. point is that, that ceramic tile is going to last an awful lot longer than yeah. BCT. So, no, right, of course, of course, just somewhere in the middle, you know, I, I nobody's looking for, yeah. for high luxury. So let's do this. Um, I, I think going forward, yeah, Jen, you're the president of the association, mm -hmm. so I, I would like that you bring up like these issues. We spend an awful lot of time on this tonight, these issues really belong in the maintenance meetings because rather than have us hack, um, hash out different uh theories and stuff. In the maintenance meeting, you've got Jack and Chris, uh, who can then go down and meet with the folks. And so if, if one of these apartments has all the tiles are totally off, well, then they'll put it in the maintenance plan to fix it. I mean, these- so, are the so, Yeah, Brian, we asked in the, you know, in, the, in the maintenance survey, I asked about the tiles, if they're broken or yeah. if they're lifted. And I also asked how many each unit, like I said, how many right, are broken. Right, right. So these, I, really, I really get a handle on, you know, yeah, is accurate. Yeah it as much as possible but there's one thing if i could ask brian so the other night um there was a meet and greet at the um at the you know for lynn which was was nice um from what i was told i had to dentist appointment but um so when the rest of, when several of the residents left that meet and greet um they they kind of had an understanding that the buildings are being wrapped because that's what they were told we're wrapping the buildings that was a statement um they were also um, under the understanding the windows are going to take three to four years for us to get windows. Um, and so, Brian, it, it's been a long time since anything major has been done down here, from my understanding, because I've only been here for four years. But it's imperative that residents are not told things that are not facts. Yeah. Because honestly, it's going to cause so much, so many problems yeah. for me yeah. and everybody else, Brian, and it's unacceptable. Yeah. And the amount of <laughs> like I had to do damage control after yeah. that, after that meeting. And so who you know, told them, who told them we were going to wrap the buildings? Um, we don't need to talk about that on here. I'm happy to talk to you, but I'm not going to, you know, I don't yeah. want to, want to no, do that. I mean, that I, but unfortunately, you know, like this is a public meeting. And so yeah. obviously yeah. this public meeting, Jack gave a uh, presentation and the presentation yeah. would, the potential of wrapping buildings. So well, no, this was this was at no. this was at the Greek at the at the community um the the what is it called the life and skills center yeah. and yeah you know, so it's just these like we we cannot we can't be told things that are not facts. It's really it's it's gonna yeah. cause some problems and I don't I'm trying to do really good things down here, Brian. I don't have time to do right. all this control. All I yeah. all I have answers to simple questions that yeah. they're not. No, I told Jack, I'm not looking to derail anything. I'm not looking to cause problems. I'm looking to actually do quite the opposite so that, you know, so any questions I ask, it's all with good intentions so that I can, I can, you know, give answers and, and help. It's not because of any other reason than that. So, you know, it's just really important that when I ask questions, if, if they're not, if they're intrusive or, you know, out of line, then just, you know, I need to be told that so that I, well, you know, you know, you know you know, uh, my view of this is is the, pre the the presidents certainly have, and anybody can call Jack, but the presidents, you know, have have a, a different status where you really, you know, could feel free to pick up the phone and call Jack and Chris um, well, any any time, whether uh, reasonable time, I mean, yeah, but any time they would get back to you in a very reasonable time, if not take your well, call right away, answer these yeah, things, you know. I I don't really necessarily feel that so much so we can work on it though i think that we can work on it um you know it took a couple of days to get answers and i had a meeting that night and i, I did email the questions late fair fair to say so it's, it's not all on on yeah. um, that but i you know it took three days to get 
or two and a half days to get answers. So, but I, again, I emailed the questions late in the day, so I'm going to take, put that on myself too. However, um, it's, it's really, it's been really difficult, Brian. I'm sorry. Like, you know, and so I, I just need this to be worked out because um, I get asked, I get, Brian, it takes me sometimes an hour to get into my car when I leave that my house, because I stop to talk to residents all the time. And when I don't have answers for them, it's embarrassing for me. It's, and I'm embarrassed for you guys too, because it really looks bad that we can't, you know, work together and I can't seem to get answers about very simple things. Well, so, there's no, there's no dis disrespect in telling somebody that you don't know when you'll find out, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I've already asked Brian, this is a problem. Like, I'm, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it's, it's been very difficult to get answers. And, um, so it's just something we need to work on and I'm hoping that, um, we can do that. Yeah. So, um, I, I don't disagree with you. And I think perhaps next month, um, maybe we can do a face-to-face, -face, uh, Jack with the, with the presidents and, you know, myself and, and if some other board members want to come up and, and do more of a high level, um, not get into the weeds and talk about, you know, um, specifics but more a high level of, of you know chatting out a different level of communication what do we do is it an email chain is it you know is this it's got to be some better way maybe um we can do a meeting in person but also you know in in due fairness for jack's time you know there's a lot of units there's a lot of folks and and you know which means there's always going to be a lot of issues and maybe there's a yeah. way to address it you know with a um, an appropriate amount of time or something. Yeah, uh, I typically try not to email him like a hundred times. You know, I try to kind of get all my questions at once and um, try and group them. So, you know, I don't want to bombard him either, but I do need some answers. So if we'll just, whatever we can try and figure this out, that would be awesome. Me too. Yeah. I mean, I truly think email is the best way to do it. And, and you know, I, he'll get back to you when, you know, he'll look at it. And if it's a priority, I mean, in, in the subject line, but if it's a priority, I mean, um, but you've got to just kind of feel out what's a priority and what's not. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, but the thing in email, you can know, go to the bottom of the things. They go to, you know, involve different words to put look pretty or the sense, but it's not easy to talk like a two person talking in a, in a chair and discuss in, you know, right away, what is the point? So, so I think, Jack, maybe are you willing to, maybe we could um, try and come up with a better way to communicate? more efficiently? I'm always looking for ways in which I can, you know, communicate more efficiently. The, the incident that's in question, I believe I received the email after working hours, it was probably 4 or 40, 4 50 on a Wednesday. And I, right. did and and by, and I did respond by either late morning on Friday or early afternoon on Friday uh, to all the to the questions that were mm. asked in that email. Mm. Okay, yeah, our meeting was on Wednesday. But it, either way, it's fine, Jack, like, but in the, it's it's not the first time, so let's just try and work together and figure out something else. Okay. Okay. So uh, you know, you. I, 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 Brian, thank you for the answer. Oh, you're welcome, Mara. So uh, Jack and I will work on a date in April, uh, probably asked after Easter at this point, to be honest with you, which will will invite the presidents, um, and we'll have a let's have a discussion on how to how to maybe move forward and, and improve things. Let's call it that way, but. Um, all right, any other nobody else on this uh, chat list? So with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? So move, so move. A second. Okay, move by next second by Fiorell. All in favor, Joanne? Yes. R? Yes. Nick? Yes. Fiorella? Okay, that's a unanimous vote. And um, thank you for a lively meeting tonight. <laughs> thank you. For yeah, I just, I just want to know what I want to know what brand of coffee Joanne and Fiorella had today. So, uh, all right, <laughs> yeah. all right. Thank you. We'll see you.